This is Canada. Canada may look quite English on the outside, but in reality, Canada can be better described as the love child between Britain and France. Among the Canadian provinces and territories, Quebec is the obvious odd one out. Quebec is like that one French kid whom Britain took custody of when France got kicked out of the house. Thus, it is no surprise that Quebec wanted to separate from Canada throughout its existence. But how did those French-speaking people end up in Canada in the first place? The short answer is European colonization, or more specifically, the settler colonies of France and Britain in North America. Ever since this dude found the Americas, European countries had tried their luck in making some colonies in the New World. The French explored and settled the St. Lawrence River region, whilst the English focused on settling the east coast of North America. Modern Quebec was part of the territories of New France, which also include Acadia, Hudson Bay, and Louisiana. Eventually, the number of French settlers in North America grew steadily, trading furs with the American natives, good money for everyone. Meanwhile, the British North American colonies were more hardcore on the American natives, and the European settlers kept pouring in like nobody's business. Fast forward, the Seven Years' War came around. For Europe, the Seven Years' War was basically Prussia showing Europe who is the new big bully. For North America, the Seven Years' War was the rivalry between France and Britain in gaining dominance of the whole continent. The French and its American native allies put up a good fight, but eventually lost to Britain, in part due to Britain having more resources and a stronger navy. Britain and Prussia emerged as the winners of the Seven Years' War, and France ceded the St. Lawrence region to Britain. Britain renamed this newly acquired territories as the province of Quebec. To keep the French population in the province of Quebec happy, the Brits tolerated the Catholic Church, protected the traditional social and economic structure, and much of the French laws were retained inside a system of British courts. During the American Revolutionary War, the Americans invaded parts of the province of Quebec, as the Americans really wanted to give the French-speaking population some freedom, to join the revolution and kick Britain's butt. The plan backfired, and the Brits took back control of the province of Quebec. After the United States gained independence, large number of loyalists fled the United States and settled in parts of the province of Quebec. The English-speaking loyalists refused to adopt the French civil law system, and thus the Brits decided to split the province of Quebec into English-speaking and French-speaking zones, namely Upper Canada and Lower Canada respectively. There were continuous tensions between the majority French-speaking population and the dominant minority English-speaking population in Lower Canada, and the beef erupted in the form of rebellions. To make the French-speaking population a minority and to weaken their influence, Britain combined both provinces of Upper Canada and Lower Canada together, forming the province of Canada, which was subdivided into Canada West and Canada East. The Canada West and Canada East subdivisions correspond to the previous provinces of Upper Canada and Lower Canada. It's like Britain telling the French-speaking population to shut up, with extra steps. Later, the Canadian Confederation was formed, and Canada East became the province of Quebec. Canada remained self-governing locally, whilst Britain continued to control its external affairs. There were calls of Quebec nationalism, like this Mercier here. Nonetheless, some French Canadians promoted conciliation between the French and English-speaking populations in Canada, like this Wilfrid Laurier, the seventh Prime Minister of Canada. Fast forward, after the Second World War, this dude Maurice dominated Quebec, who promoted traditionalism ideas, and the church institutions became powerful. In the 1960s, the support for Quebec independence grew, because a lot of countries were also gaining independence during this period. The French President Charles de Gaulle visited and shouted freedom to Quebec, deeply offending the Canadian federal government and the English-speaking Canadians. There were terrorist groups who supported the Quebec independence movement, and murders and bombs went off. The Quebec's provincial government had a huge beef with the federal government, particularly since the federal government followed a policy of centralization. The French-speaking population pushed for increased linguistic and cultural accommodations. 
The English-speaking population considered these measures as unacceptable concessions to the French-speaking population. In 1976, the first separatist government was formed in Quebec under Parti Québécois. An independence referendum was held in 1980, in which the majority population of Quebec chose to reject independence. In 1982, the Canada Act was passed by the British Parliament, basically saying that Canada is now fully independent. Quebec did not sign the Canadian Constitution, a situation that persists until today. In 1995, a second referendum for Quebec sovereignty was held. Again, the population of Quebec chose to reject independence, this time by a very slim margin. Since then, the Quebec independence movement kinda died down, and Quebec remained within Canada until today, a country within a country. In the larger picture, the Quebec independence movement can be interpreted as a manifestation of the beef between the French and English people, a rivalry which can trace its origins to the Middle Ages. In Canada, this rivalry is kinda friendly today, as Toronto and Montreal compete with each other to see who is the most awesome city in Canada, and who plays better ice hockey. Nobody really cares about Ottawa, like Canberra in Australia. If Quebec chose to be independent in the 1990s, then the world might be quite different today. Technically, it will be a second Latin American country in North America, along with Mexico, because the French language by definition, is in the Romance language family which is derived from Latin. France will probably be happy and proud of its North American child. Canada will be fractured, losing quite a significant portion of population, land area, and economy. Some other provinces in Canada may also investigate the opportunity of secession as well, and opening up the possibility of joining the United States, because why not? Canadians have always been the joke for the Americans. The independence of Quebec would ignite separatist movements elsewhere, like Scotland and Catalonia, as rights to self-determination were proven to be attainable. In the United States, the independence of Quebec might become an inspiration for those states who had been flirting with the idea of independence, like this Texas here, proving that secession from the federal government can be achieved. Anyway, back to reality, given that the French-speaking population in Canada are doing quite well nowadays, there are limited support for separatism, because everyone benefits from a united and strong Canada, and there are limited arguments supporting the notion that French-speaking people in Canada are being mistreated. Today, Canada forms the bridge between the Anglophone and Francophone countries, demonstrated by the love here between these people and these two guys. Quebec remains a symbol of the French cultural identity in North America, of which Louisiana is gradually losing. Thanks to Quebec, we have these legendary entertainers making harmless pranks, the ultimate godfather to the YouTuber pranks we see today. Can Quebec become independent in the future? Yes, if it really wanted to, because Canada is a friendly guy who wants the best for everyone, at least for now. Thanks for watching.